Now, typically, whenever I do juice in here, I like to buy the big gold grapes when they're available at Costco's with the seeds inside. The extract that's taken from those hard little grape seeds is a real powerful antioxidant called proanthocyanin. Now, you can buy a vial of this at the stuff at like a GNC or a health food market. It costs you about 50 bucks. The natural source of the seeds that are found on those grapes naturally. Uh, even little small seeds like you find on berries, like strawberries. Strawberries are really high in allergic acid, which is a powerful cancer fighter, but the stems are a good source of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll actually helps to build and strengthen your immune system. If you're a are you pineapple doing ice fan, cream or are you doing a I'm doing a juice here, and then we go to a, I do a soup and I do an ice cream. So I do a, a presentation that kind of shows you all the different things that you can do with the machine. Now the pineapple, most people who eat it, they cut off the core of the pineapple, they toss the core in the garbage because it's difficult to chew. All the fiber in the pineapple is in the core. Lack of fibers help people develop colon cancer and diverticulitis. A lot of people later on in their lives have to buy things like Citrusel or Metamucil and drink them every day just to get enough fiber. Anytime you use a melon, you want to keep all the seeds on all the melons. Now the seeds are very high in fiber, but when they're cracked open, they're loaded with protein, just like flax seeds are. You can toss a whole bunch of flax seeds in your juices, and this machine will just liquefy them for you. Bananas are, of course, a good source of potassium, which helps to strengthen or give you strong bones. Now, typically, whenever I do juicing at home, I would actually toss like, a frozen banana in there or some frozen berries to make it cold. Uh, here, I'm going to use ice because most people who burn out cheap machines, they will burn them out all the time with ice or frozen fruit. If you go buy a $50 blender, they actually have a motor about the size of my little finger. And when you start to pack them full with some heavy things, you can actually smell the motors start to burn up on you. Now, eventually, this break, I use ice here just to make everything cold, but to also show you something. Now, would you ever start any blender that you've ever owned crammed with this many ingredients, but leave the lid off while you start to blend? No. Probably not, right? A typical blender blade is a cross-pattern blade just like this. If they are cheap machines, they, ch they chase all the material around the inside of the jar. So you have to shake the jar around, or you have to stir things up to the lid just to get it to perform its job. If it's expensive, some machines have tools to help you assist in pushing everything into the blades. Now, our machine here uses a single wingtip blade. It is a commercial blending unit, and the big blade isn't sharp. The way that they are designed is to pull the material right to the bottom of the jar instead of chasing the material around. On the front, there's no knobs, dials, or switches to control the machines. These are programmed so that kids who work at smoothie bars and restaurants can simply load a recipe in the jar, touch a program, and the machine makes the recipe for you. So if you'd like to make a whole juice, do you mind pushing that whole juice button for me? And I'm going to go ahead and leave the lid off while you start to blend. Whole juice. Now right there, any of the blender would have taken all those ingredients and started shooting them all the countertop and making a real big mess. Now our machines actually have 10 speeds, but the speeds are all self-regulated. So without me shaking the machine around or trying to stir things through the lid, it simply switches speeds and pulls the material right to the bottom of the jar. Now at top speed, this is a three-peak horsepower motor. They run at just under 30,000 RPM. That is over 300 miles per hour on the inside of those jars at top speed. Now those speeds, our machine will take raw vegetables, just like this, and in 90 seconds, using the friction of the blade crates, it will cook those vegetables into a nice hot soup. But you don't want to cook your juice, right? If you guys had a manually operated machine with this much power, and you went around just to shut it off and the cycle is complete, you could overdo a recipe. That little screen in the front shows you what cycle is running, how much time is left, and when it's finished, it shuts itself down. Now that process is actually called micronization. It's actually breaking down and liquefying the cell walls of a whole fruit, a whole vegetable, including your skins, seeds, stems, everything that was in the juice. 